Yeah, Stefan Fischer here from All of Road. I'm here with Joe from JS Auto Electrics. He is my go-to auto electrician for the past two or three years. Yeah. Um, it was very hard to find someone good. So, And uh, Joe did all of my cars, Cruiser, Jeep, the Lithium. And what I really like, sorry that you're standing next to it and I butter you up here, but he actually is happy to look into new things, do research and so on. And very few electricians do that. And especially with Lithium being such a new technology, that is important and I think we're all constantly still learning. Eh? We are and there's so many different variances and brands and things. Yeah, yeah. We are, it's a, an evolving technology basically at the end of the day. So we have to keep up with it, I guess. So. Yes, 100 percent. So that's a new signature trailer, which is a reasonably low cost camper trailer. $18,000 or so. I think I paid for it um, for full disclosure. I got a media discount, but as you know, that will not change how I review a product. For full disclosure, a lot of the gear I have on the camper trailer has been given to me for review and testing purposes. That is part of having a YouTube channel. However, nothing is just been put on the camper trailer because it was free. I researched all the items beforehand. I narrowed it down to one or two products. Then I contact the companies and see whether they are interested providing me the items for review purposes. So. I did a lot of upgrades now to it, or better, uh, Joe did, uh, in regards to the electrical side. Just tell me briefly, how was the initial, initial wiring, Joe? So what, what do you reckon of the wiring so far? The agricultural. But Is it? Yeah, yeah. So you replace most, or? I will. Um, things that I don't like as well is where they've strapped all the clamps. They've just self tapped straight through the uh, box tube where you got your main cable and it goes through. To me, that's a, it's a chafing issue. Yes, okay. So I'll just remove them as well so it doesn't rub through. Okay. Even if it's tubed, it will still rub. Yeah. So over time, particularly if you're driving on corrugated, corrugated. Roads, yes. So a bit basic as far as I is concerned. Yeah. So. Yeah, look, you know, it is made to a price. Yeah, well, that's it. Everything else looks good. Yeah. yeah. It's just. Um, yeah, but I expected stuff like that to be done as long as the frame and then everything yeah. lasts, you know? You know what, even like you see in big branded um, vans and yeah. campers and that same thing, it seems to be electrical sort of it's the last. an afterthought unless yeah. the, the customer specifies they want certain products. The original wiring was set up yeah. for two crystal LED batteries, which I don't understand because really that technology, I had one of them in the cruiser that didn't work out too well. They are not produced anymore here, the better batteries at least. So yeah, it doesn't make sense to me. So I ripped them out yeah. right away. And it also it didn't have a charging system. It had very thin wiring that went through an Anderson plug to that. So yeah, it was the very big voltage drops that would have run to that as well. So. First things first, like I said, we've upgraded the cabling to the charging system from a 8 BNS to a 4 BNS cable. Um, obviously we've ripped these out or led crystal batteries out. Um, and we've put in the uh, 150 amp hour ultra high performance DCS, which is an IP rated battery. Um, so it's an IP67 battery. Yeah, and I chose that battery because I like the DCS. I reckon they are the best batteries on the market. For full disclosure, I didn't pay for that battery. I have received that for review purposes. But so far, after having the other DCS in the cruiser for 16 months now, yeah, at the moment, I don't think there's a better battery on the market. IP67 is good to have, but if that whole thing is underwater, um, I have different problems. Yeah, particularly with this sitting above it, yes. the inverter, the charger, yeah. so with the multi plus, but yeah. But at least, you know, if there would be some water in the bottom here or, or if whatever. You had a, or a seal leak. broke and it actually dripped in, yeah that's, yeah, that's that's a good idea. Or if you do a 
you never know, you might do a water crossing, it may come up to there. Like exactly. you're not going to go drowning it, but yep. obviously wheels splat, like the water splatting in. So yep. it's, it's good to know that it is um, sealed. Basically, the charging systems are BC, Red Arc BC DC uh, 1250D, dual input charger. So a yep. DC input um, so ch for charging off your alternator and also a solar input. So what we have done with that, um, we've also wired in a Victron battery protect unit. Um, so all our loads, including the inverter, this is a 220 amp one. There is two variances in this. There's a smart version um, and there's also uh, just this uh, standard version. The smart version has got the app which you can change uh, your disconnect and reconnect voltages. Uh, we didn't do it in this particular setup because we're running your um, the smart BMV battery monitor, the Victron yep. unit, um, and I set the disconnect uh, parameters via uh, the Victron monitor. Okay. Um, so you can do it with voltage and you can do it with um, state of charge. Um, so yeah, so this, all your loads will disconnect. Um, the extra wire that's come off on the, um, on the input to this is basically from the charger. So if this disconnects and then once you get solar or your DC input has um, started to charge through the DC charger, obviously um, it's going to be charging um, directly into the battery. So, yeah. um, so the battery will start charging straight away. So the Multi Plus, this is a um, 1600 watt inverter um, and charger in one. Um, we've this is a pass-through system, so basically when you plug your mains in, um, it, the 240 actually goes through this unit to your power point, but then this actually turns onto a charger then. When mains is disconnected from this unit, it just purely converts back to a, um, an inverter, inverter. For, your, mm -hmm. for your AC output or your GPO output on the other side. Yep. Um, we've also got that protected via a circuit breaker up here. Um, which is out of this unit here. So if you've obviously got any shorts or anything like that, um, or appliances that are faulty, it's going to trip that. Yeah, so I, that means I have a 1600 watt inverter. Yes. I can run a coffee machine or whatever I really nearly want of it. I, want to, yeah. um, I had a, um, a heat gun which was drawing 1800 watts on that. It was for a couple of minutes, so it did go over that 1600 watt. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't sort of recommend that, but it is a yeah, very yeah. capable. Unit. unit. The beauty of them is you've got the ability to change via their Victron, um, um, not the Victron Connect, the, they've got a Victron um, unit, um, which is like a pass-through dongle. We can change the charging parameters. You can also change the AC sides of things, which we don't ch change. Yeah. Um, basically, we've changed that from your standard uh, lead acid style charging to a um, to a lithium uh, charge profile. And we charge with 50 amps or so? 51 amps. Yeah. So with the Victron standard uh, Victron charge profile um, mm. is 51 amps to um, to 95%. And then once it gets to 95%, and then it starts to tail Drops the off. current off. Yeah, as, okay. as a flow. You can change the parameters, but uh, the guys at DCS said to leave it at the default Victron yeah. um, setting, which we have, and yeah, it's uh, cool. running like a charm. Um, awesome. So I can pretty much, if the car is parked up at home, I just plug put that in into 220, yep. and, and then the batteries will... Well, the charger will, will, or the inverter charger, the Multi Plus will detect the AC voltage coming yep. in automatically. Yep. Uh, providing you've got it on the on position, there's a toggle on the baser there. Yep. So providing you've got that light on, yep. you'll hear a click inside the unit and then the charge light will come on, which is an amber, uh, amber colour light. And then that's basically the, the charger doing yep. its thing. And um, yeah, I converted that compartment because really there was a drawer here. Yes. Um, so I took that out. I have two shelves which are going to put in here, have a little cardboard end. So yep. I still have room in there, you know, yep. but that now gives me a lot of options. That is a family camper yes. so if the wife really wants to run whatever coffee machine or so she, she can you know yeah yeah, yeah 100%, so. but one thing before lithium i don't know maybe all my setups were bad but i was never happy with agm because it was so unpredictable 
and I was always running short on Fraser, you know, if you don't have sun for a few days. So with lithium now, that's the first time I'm at ease. At ease. And also, I think the, the, the biggest benefit with lithium is just how quick it does charge because mm. you can pump that the maximum input. So obviously you're limited to what DC charger you have, but being able to pump, say, for, for the red arc, for argument's sake, that 50 amp up until the top 95 or 95, 99% of that battery's capacity yeah. is a lot quicker than, say, a, an AGM or a lead acid. What um, else? Okay, so we've got your solar input for your solar blanket. Yeah. Um, also, if you go a rooftop tent, we'll tap that into the line somewhere if you're going to go a fixed panel in the yep. future. Um, the beauty, uh, one thing with the Red Arc um, BCDC 1250D is that it has a, a built-in solar controller. MPPT controller and it's priority. So if you've got a fixed panel, um, it's going to prioritize or draw what it can out of the solar before it's pulling it off your yeah. automator. So. And it's up to 50 amp input, huh? Yes. Yeah, so yeah. that's a pretty yeah, big, I mean, is, you yeah. would actually have to pay quite some money to get a 50 amp so solar array to uh, MPPT, yeah, to you know? Controller, yeah. yeah. So. But mind you, that is for a 12 volt, 12 volt, 17 volt panels, you know? Yes. Okay, what we've done as well in this one, I don't know if you can see that little fan up there. So that's to draw. So when we've got it on the bolt charge, on the 240 charger, if you've got that door shut, mm -hmm. um, we've got that little fan to draw heat out. We've got a little intake down the bottom there. So yep. it's going to draw from the bottom and then pull out. Where do things. we switch the fan? On your little control panel here, yep. which is that one there. Uh, uh, this one here? Yep. Okay. So you can hear that running now. Fan, yeah. Draws about 0.8 of an amp. Yeah, it's okay, let me quickly reposition the camera. That's a little Sirocco fan as well, so it's a good quality fan. Okay, so we switched sides now. And this is a stock control panel. Yep. Which we made a few changes. The stock radio or the radio which came with it was, to be honest, pretty crap. It had interferences, it actually never worked. To be honest, I didn't contact the guys because I'm sure I would have gotten a replacement or they would have fixed it. But I just put a Meckless uh, Pioneer in. That's a short unit, no DVD, no, no moving part, which I think for a camper trailer is good and they cost a hundred bucks. So, Joe. Okay, so on this side, um that's the um, Victor monitor, the BMV712 Smart, so, so the, the Bluetooth version. Um, so that's basically giving the app, I find the apps easier and clearer to use than, than this. This is still base, like basic yeah. looking. Um, so basically gives you your, your state of charge, hours until flat. At the moment, infinity means that we're just covering a load of uh, inputs and outputs, so we, we can run for an infinite amount of time. Because it would now actually, we have it hooked up, so, so it will actually tar yeah. charge from my two lithiums in the car. Yes, we'll be yeah. pulling out of that. So, so we've got your battery voltages. So the main battery is, obviously, is the house battery, so it's a battery voltage in the camper. Um, auxiliary volt voltage is the input voltage. Um, 32 amps, you can see that the BCDC is actually uh, drawing 32 or putting 32 amps of charge into the vehicle as, or into that battery as we stand. Um, that's converted into watts, 444 watts. And that's amp hours consumed. So from 100% state of charge, we've consumed 15 amp hours. Yeah. Oh, that's a that. pretty, pretty neat little unit. I have that in a few, I have that in a Jeep as well. I'll run that in, in my... Um, my Hilux as well. So Red Arc also owns Hummingbird and I asked them whether they would provide me one of these Hummingbirds and that is pretty much an odometer. Mm. So you can uh, put alarms and so on in because I find I don't really track the kilometers I do with the trailer for bearings and service and mm. so on and these pretty much will track all the kilometers done and I can set an alarm and I know okay it's done for uh, it's due for service so I reckon that's a pretty good unit. I think that's a unit. very good and that's a good idea because obviously 
like I know when I tow my caravan, I don't state how many kilometres I've yep. done, so it's quite easy to lose track. Yes. Um, so with that being at the touch of a button, you know how many k's you've done. And wheel bearings, how many trailers do you see that have lost a wheel or seized wheel bearing? It's, um, it's a, yeah, I think it's a very good idea to put Yeah, 100%. Out. Um, yeah, then we have, we added uh, some extra switches, which I wanted. For accessories? Um, yeah, for accessories, which are fused. I also added another um, 12 volt cigarette plug here, um, because, yeah, not enough for my liking. Okay, in here we've added your GPO, which is up in the corner there. Yeah. So that's a caravan specific one. So that's um, a double pole, pole GPO. So it switches active and neutral off um, both circuits. Where a lot of house stuff is just um, just the active, it switches off. So okay. even the input, the two, uh, 240 volt input is a, um, we've, put a, an IP66 rated one as well. So it's, okay. it's maybe a little bit overkill, but I, that's what my 240 electrician prefers, to have something that's um, sort of watertight to a degree. Yes. So. so that would be this one here. Just safety at the end of the day. Yes. Uh, better be safe uh, than sorry, and yep. I don't like shortcuts, uh, neither does Joel, no. that's why I think we fit quite well there yes, together with yes. getting the stuff done, yes, you know. Yes. Uh, Joe also run me some extra cables yep. in here. Up there for future lighting. Um, yeah. Your, GP, your GPS aerials mounted in here yeah. for your hummingbird. Yeah. Um, I installed a laser lamp utilities 25, a very bright but pleasant light, which I could get with a yellow cover, which keeps insects down and makes the light a bit more pleasant. As a fridge and freezer, I use a Bushman SC35252, which I already use for nine years through multiple four-wheel drives. I have a dedicated review about this fridge on my YouTube channel. Make sure to check it out. We also have some theft protection in there, but we're not going to discuss that obviously any further. Um, yeah, so... Happy camping. Cool. I also ran... Uh, a light to the front here because the box has no light um, to give me yeah some light at the bottom here which you can't see we put all the stuff in here so there's a light here so that is all all the electrical workout huh yep give your business a little plug you're in Annan Grove I guess yes Annan Grove there's uh, me and my brother yeah uh, we've been yeah. in business 21 years so uh, predominantly the last five years, six years we've been doing four-wheel drive fit-outs and caravans um, and that's something we love, something I do, I, car I go caravanning, I, I enjoy it and I, I get a lot of job satisfaction you know and, yeah. and, and when customers are happy with things that work and yeah. they work how you explain they're going to work that's um yeah I get a lot of satisfaction out of that. No, oh, awesome and every time I come here there are different caravans yeah there are you put some mighty big uh, DCS battery yes, systems yes, in now yes yes um, lithium wise you know yeah, yeah. thanks a lot for watching guys I hope you enjoyed the electrical walkthrough of my signature deluxe uh, camper trailer I will also do a full walkthrough of the camper trailer and then also in a year's time a review about the camper trailer. So if you enjoy my content, please don't forget to like, subscribe and share and maybe even consider shouting me a cup of coffee or two via Patreon. It would greatly help me out making these videos and it will also give you early access to my videos and you can ask me direct questions via the Patreon platform. Thanks a lot for watching and I see you along the tracks.